Okay, so here's three SBC computers, a Pi 4, a CADAS VIM 4, and a Mechatronics R58. And they're in order of power. So this is the weakest of them. It's been out the longest. Uh, still a great device with incredible support. But when I tried the VIM 4, I was really impressed, uh, especially with PSP performance uh, and Linux performance. This definitely was a step forward. Uh, it's using a better processor and really, really impressive. But when I got the Rockchip RK3588, it, uh, it blew me away. It was so much more powerful uh, for Linux and also for Android. The performance was really, really good, uh, especially for gaming and emulation. PS2 emulation on this is perfect, really, really good. But obviously it's a lot bigger. So still keeping these in uh, order of performance, let's introduce something new, and that is the CADUS Edge 2. So it's using the Rockchip RK3588S, whereas this is using the Rockchip RK3588, which is a scaled down version offering fewer features, but most importantly, it has exactly the same CPU and GPU. And here I've got all three of the smaller boards together because the camera angle is making this look bigger. It is in fact the same size as a VIM4 and pretty much the same size as a Pi4, although much, much slimmer. So the actual footprint of this is tiny. This is without the heatsink at the moment. I'm gonna start the test without the heatsink. Uh, I have been sent one in this bag here. Uh, I haven't got it out yet because I just figured I'd see how hot it gets without a heatsink and a fan. So it comes in this tiny little box and you can see from the outside of the box that it's got 64 gig eMMC drive, so it's got storage built in and uh, it also has 16 gig of RAM, which is huge for such a tiny little board. One of the cool things about CADIS boards is the setup. Very, very simple. So if we pop the HDMI in, pop a USB-C in, I've got my mouse keyboard dongle and if I switch on, you're greeted with the UWOW system, which is uh, an easy way of installing, but also putting in things like Wi-Fi and various different settings. And this is what you're greeted with on first boot. So you can see here, Wizard, easiest way to install any OS. Now I've already covered this in my Vim 4 video, so I'm only gonna do the basics. Uh, I'm gonna go to network and I'm gonna set up my Wi-Fi. So let's go select connection, enable Wi-Fi, and it's picked up my network, so let's connect. Put your password in. And that's done, so if I go back and back again, and let's do continue. And here we have our operating system. So this is already done for you. Uh, you can see here we've got Ubuntu 22.04 GNOME, and also we've got Android 11 and Android 12. So let's go with Android 12 and download. Okay, it looks like it's unpacking. Okay, so I've got an image not suitable for Edge 2 board. Now, I'm doing this nearly three weeks before the release of this board. So I'm gonna try Android 11 instead. So let's hit cancel and do exactly the same with that. So Android 11 and download. Actually, we get a different screen on that because it's giving me progress in the middle. Okay, nearly done. So we get this next screen which gives us an option to install. So let's install it. Okay, so that's all done, so I can hit reboot and reboot. And we get the Rockchip logo and Android. So as this board hasn't come out yet, the version of Android is a bit more basic than the one I had for the Vim 4. The Vim 4 one had the Google Play Store and had some dedicated CADA settings. This is a real bare bones version of Android. So on my iPad, I'm gonna download the Aptide Store, so let's click on that. Click on download and download. So now if I go into Downloads, you can see here Aptide Latest. So I've copied that file onto my USB stick, so let's pop that in the CADIS board. Drag up from the bottom and click on Files and the little hamburger menu here and my USB drive. So I'm looking for that Aptide file, here it is. Double click it and continue and install. And let's open that up and accept. I can skip all of this. So now if we go home, this shows us that we've got the Aptide store. Need to connect to the internet now. So settings and Wi-Fi, and see if it detects my network. Yeah, it does, so let's click on that. There is a separate little Wi-Fi board that I can plug in, because I can see that's a bit low, but let's try it anyway. So let's try Aptide again for Dolphin Emulator, and install that, and install. I need to allow this now. So let's say allow. 
and go to settings to allow that. So allow from this source and install. Let's go back and you can see the Dolphin emulator is installed. I'm going to install a load more things in that same way and I'll come back when all that's done. So it's several days later, I've been making use of the connectivity on the board and uh, I've been trying out this USB-C socket, which I've got a USB-C on the go adapter in there. I'm not using it in on the go, uh, but I've got my Xbox controller and also a USB stick with some games on it. And uh, I've still got a USB-A socket here. Uh, here's my mouse keyboard plugged in. These little cables, I bought this recently. I've got a USB-C to C and a USB-A to C. They're so cool, they show how much power is being used and uh, I've got it on uh, an official Raspberry Pi adapter but with just a little coupler this is a USB-C coupler so you can basically join it together but yeah I really like that it's a really cool little cable I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in them so let's have a look at what I've installed quite a bit as you can see here uh, so let's go with a bit of Dolphin so a bit of GameCube emulation one of my favorite games of all time Dave Mira Freestyle BMX Unfortunately, I have to get rid of the excellent music. I'll take the sound effects down a little bit. Now, I don't know if you can hear sound. There is definitely sound, but I'm going through a capture device, so that's why I haven't got any for me, but uh, it doesn't matter for playing it. Right, so, as you can see, it's working pretty well. Oh, this is gonna be a nice load of points. <laughs> nice. So Dave Mira working great. I played through it quite a bit and uh, I've been really pleased with it. So let's quit out of that and go back in again and try a different game. Oh, I've got to go back. Let's try a bit of Smuggler's Run. Okay, so the speed seems actually pretty fast. Uh, what have we got? 50, 60 FPS. Doesn't seem to be slowing down. Yeah, that, that is running nice. So a bit of PS2. So let's go with a bit of Castlevania. Yep, yeah, and we're getting a good 50, 60 FPS on that. Looks pretty decent. GTA San Andreas. Okay, so it looks like it's 30 FPS on GTA, which is, must be what the game is. But uh, it feels all right. I need to get in a car to go a bit faster, really. Let's jump in this one. Just ask nicely if I could borrow the car. Right, so, yeah, that feels all right, actually. I'm happy with that. I'm using the Vulcan driver. Um, I haven't changed any settings on the PSP emulator. <laughs> nice bit of driving. And that was just a scratch. Yeah, I'd say that's working pretty decent. For such a tiny board, this is just incredible, really. Uh, I'd love to know what the RAM usage was. I'm just gonna go straight from this to ADA64. Uh, and is it gonna let me do it? So, yeah, if I do this and get an ADA64, because this is going to show me the temperature that it's got to. So, rem remember, I'm not using the fan. It was up at 73 then, uh, so I quit straight into it, and uh, it was still, I would say that's okay, um, but I'm going to put the fan on and the heat sink in a minute just to see. So, video playback, as we expected, was going to be perfect. Um, I'm, this is 1080 because I've got a 1080 monitor. I'm using it through the web browser because uh, the YouTube app doesn't work because I haven't got the Google Play Store installed. That will obviously come on a later update, but yeah, it was to be expected that video performance was going to be great. And if you check out the Mechatronics uh, review that I did, I actually showed 8K on that. So, as long as the video drivers are correct, we know that these chips can really handle video at a really, really high rate. I haven't tried Minecraft yet. Okay, so I would say that seems to be working as expected. That seems absolutely fine. Say hello to the horse. You can see it's moving around nicely. I mean, it. yeah, there's loads of power on this device. It's, it's obviously going to play Minecraft, but I thought I'd show it because a lot of people play it, and it is a great game. So before I do Fortnite... I'm going to uh, put the fan on and attach the antennas. So the antennas go onto these little two tiny little dots here, uh, which give you, I don't know which one's which, but one of them's Wi-Fi, one of them's Bluetooth. Uh, obviously that works better if it's in a case. So let's put the fan on first of all. Let's switch off that cable. It takes a while for the power to go off. So that's off on the cable. You can see there's a red light on there. Ah, there you go. So here is the fan, heat sink and four screws. So the heat sink's obviously going to go on that lovely rock chip processor. So it can only be this way around. 
and screw those in. And I've plugged the fan connection in, which is really close to the connection, so there's only, you know, it's obvious where it goes, and obviously it keeps it nice and neat. But look how slim that is still. Overall, it's slimmer than an Ethernet connection. So let's try these antennas. Oh, it's, it's really fiddly. I'm gonna use my screwdriver kit. I'll have a little plastic thing to be able to push that down. So I can't get the antennas to go on. It looks like they just pop on, but it's incredibly fiddly. And uh, I think I'm gonna leave it off for now. I've got the fan on, so let's play around with that. So because I'm gonna do a bit of online gaming, I'm using a USB ethernet adapter now. And uh, even with all this plugged in, it's still only using 3.3 watts. So this is a very, very efficient computer, even though it's very fast. Okay, so let's try a bit of Fortnite. When it's updated, that is. Okay, let's just jump straight in and see what happens. Okay, so it's working all right with the controller, which is good. All the buttons seem to be as they were. I haven't played this for ages. All the buttons seem to be as they were. Uh, the Xbox 360 controller doesn't have as much range of movement, I think, as uh, an Xbox One controller, but we'll give it a go. At least we are managing to hit people. <laughs> oh dear, look. You were removed from the match due to an internet lag, your IP or machine, VPN usage for cheating or being an untrusted platform. We recommend not utilizing VPN or proxy services while attempting. Okay, so I've turned up some of the settings. I can't seem to change much else. Medium, 3D resolution on maximum. Let's try that. You can see I've changed the quality. It looks a lot crisper. Okay, but it's let me in this bit. And that, that looks good actually. That looks nice and crisp. And where's the FPS, 30 FPS. Let's see what happens. Ooh. <laughs> Running. Oh, it runs fast now, doesn't it? Well, that's changed. Well, there doesn't seem to be any lag with the players that are running around, so whether it detects that this version of Android... Uh, I mean, it certainly doesn't have any Google Play on it. And it still says it's downloading HD textures. Oh, oh it's not going to do it. Oh, internet lag, IP, VPN user, okay. So uh, I'm gonna have to leave Fortnite, but it did look like it was gonna be all right. Certainly from that, uh, even with the higher resolution, it did look pretty decent. So maybe when we get a newer version of Android, we might get that working. So I'm gonna quit out of that with the Xbox button and close it down. So drag down again, you've got power off and power off. Okay, so that's probably off because it says zero watts. So let's turn it off. And you've got three buttons. You've got function, reset, and power. So when you reboot, you press and hold the function button, the middle one, and then press reset. So let's try that. So switch on, pressing the function button, press reset, and hopefully we get the ooh wow menu. I had the fan spin up then, so I didn't hear it spin up at all when I was playing the game, which is better than the Vim 4. The fan definitely cuts in less. Uh, so wizard, Continue. So now it shows me the operating systems that I've got at the moment. Again, this is early days. So I'm going to pick the Ubuntu 2204 GNOME. Uh, so that's the one with the desktop environment. Let's hit enter. 828 megabytes and download. I do like this system. It does work really well. So let's come back when that's all done. So here is Ubuntu 2204. And if I start opening a few things up, we'll show you how quick everything runs. Uh, I'm really impressed with it so far. So if I press the Windows key, uh, we can see all the various things that are open. This is weird. This is um, this is a bit of code that uh, enables you to use an Xbox controller. For some reason, it didn't recognize my Xbox 360 controller, and that's pretty much recognized by everything. But uh, I'll put a link in the description to how to get that to work, but it may, may only be with Xbox controllers. So you can see files. Uh, we can go into uh, LibreOffice Writer. We can go into Chrome. And uh, let's do a search, the Lee PSP video HDR, and accept that. Let's go full screen with that, with all these things running in the background, including PPSSPP. Uh, and actually it was supposed to show HDR, so let's show that one. Let's get rid of this. And if we go full screen, we'll skip the advert, especially as it's got music in it. Uh, and then change the resolution. Well, first of all, we'll go straight up to 1080. And turn on Stats for Nerds. 
let's just skip this trial. You can see it doesn't struggle with any open windows or anything like that. So we've got zero frames dropped at 1080 uh, with all these other things open. And let's go right up to 1440. Uh, this is a 1080 monitor, but you can still simulate it being at 1440. So again, not dropping any frames, not struggling at all. And let's go right up to 4K and see what happens with that. So this is 4K30 and it dropped a few frames then, but it seems to have sorted itself out. And again, I am running other things at the same time. So that is behaving really well. And looking at the screen looks absolutely fine to me. Uh, if I quit out of that and just do, in fact, let's pop that down to 1080 and let's start opening some more tabs. So we go BBC Sport and Hot UK Deals. You may be able to hear the fan is on at the moment. Uh, it does come on and go off every now and then. Uh, if I launch P Sensor, uh, oh, I haven't installed it yet. So uh, let's go to Terminal. I'm going to have to stop my Xbox control a bit. And Control Alt T and sudo install P Sensor. I completely forgot what I was doing then. Okay, so, oh, let's just uh, pause that wherever that is here. Oh, I should have done that. I should have pressed the Windows key and gone here and then here, and then I can pause that. Uh, right, so back to terminal. P sensor is there now, so if I type in P sensor, you can see it comes up. And at the moment, it's not particularly hot. Let's start playing 4K video again. And let's go back to my video. There we go, and change that to 4K. The performance is great, it's really, really fast. I'm really happy with it. Ah, the fans come on now, so if I go down to P Sensor, we can see that uh, what well, one of the cores has gone up to 63 is the max. Uh, but actually, at the moment, Current value, yeah, maybe it's around about 60 that it cuts in quite early. I'd maybe raise that a bit, but I'm not sure what the board is supposed to be at. Let's close the terminal down uh, and everything else. And I'll show a bit of PSP, uh, which is a file that the CADIS team gave me to try. Have I got anything else open at the moment? No, nothing else open at the moment. Do need to open terminal and for some reason do this Xbox enabled. There you go. And you can see it's doing it. I think if I, if I move my controller, does it? Oh yeah, you can see all the all the buttons and everything on there. And you can see in the background the PSP emulator is working. So if we go to games and we can switch over to the controller now. So something like Outrun 2006, and I've got a save state on this. So let's load that up. This is at four times resolution uh, and is working really nicely. Oh, wrong button. So you can see it looks very, very smooth. It's a solid 60 FPS up in the corner there as we slide run oh. and weave in and out of all the other cars. This is, a, this is a great game. It is really nice to play and just looks so, considering this is a PSP game, so tiny game, uh, but when you upscale these games, they are great. That was driving terrible. Right, let's slide through. Oh, pretty good. Right, so if I quit out of that, and let's load another game. So exit the menu and let's try a bit of Gran Turismo, which uh, th this is funny because it won't seem like it's going at the right speed, but it is. It's just that I'm going from an arcade to a simulation and uh, I don't know what I'm driving. Oh, I'm driving a Renault again, so it's not gonna be the fastest of cars, but also looks great. Again, lovely and smooth. You see the detail as I get up close, look. Looks really, really good. Ah, I'm trying to get out of the uh, out of the car. Let's get around the corner first. There you go. So it looks really slow out of the car, but uh, but it is running at the right speed. You can see it says 59, 60 FPS. This is a slow car, and I'm only doing 64 kilometers an hour around a racetrack. So let's quit out of that. One more to show on here, um, Motorstorm, whether, I think this must be a lot harder to run because 
this does actually run a little bit slow and it's a bit jittery but i'll go into the settings and i'll see if i can improve that let's just show you what it does look like first of all there's some sort of glitch with the shadows oh and it's triggers for this and it's 29 fps so actually 29 might be all right some games do run at that but you can see the shadows are a bit off-putting so if i quit out of that go into settings you can see it's opengl there is no vulcan driver on this build so frame skips not on uh let's just knock it down to say two times as it was struggling oh that's better so that's 30 fps we've still got those weird shadows which i'm sure one of the many settings in PPSSPP will deal with that but yeah that feels that feels like it's meant to be pretty decent i haven't played this before so really happy with it uh yeah, psp emulator i mean i expected to work well because uh, I've even had uh, PS2 and Dolphin working in Android, so you know PSP isn't going to be a struggle. But uh, when you upscale it, that is really, really impressive. So let's exit out of that. And I'm going to see if I can fit this into my Raspad, which is a, a Raspberry Pi tablet. So uh, let's have a look at that. Okay, so here is the Raspad 3. Uh, that I had a 1 gig Pi 4 in there, which I'm going to take out. You can see where all the cabling goes. Obviously, the cables are in different places on the Edge 2. Everything is on this side uh, and it uses a full size HDMI so I need a few adapters to be able to get it to fit. So I'm going to play around with cables and see how I can get on. USB-C is going to be easy. So one of these little HDMI adapters, pop this one in here, do a little turn with that. Okay, the USB is fine. That's going to go into one of those. This might fit a bit better than the um, Vim 4. What I've got to be mindful of is there's a screw hole there. Don't need the Ethernet. Yeah, I think that's probably going to do it. So let's put the back on and have a look in there to see that there's nothing in the way. And as I did before, I just use one screw because that's all you need to hold it together. Right, so if I power it on, you see the lights come on and as you can see we've got normal Ubuntu so if I wanted to open up files if I wanted to go through the applications I can all of this works uh, all the settings and everything it's actually quite well set up for touchscreen Ubuntu let's try the web browser do I have to double tap no just single tap and let's do my video again leave a PSP HDR accept all start playing the video yeah, it's nice and snappy and the Wi-Fi is working within this case, which is quite impressive. I am in the same room as the Wi-Fi, um, but I didn't put that Wi-Fi adapter on. So let's go full screen. Let's skip the advert. You can hear the sound is working. I haven't had to do anything. That just worked. Uh, and this is playing, I think, at 14.40, actually. Yeah, so this is playing at 14.40. And if I slide down from the top, you can see it minimizes. Yeah, working well. Okay, so thanks very much to Cadus for sending me the Edge 2 to test. It's a really impressive, tiny board, very low on power, but very powerful. And the RK3588S is a superb processor. Uh, this is KDE Plasma, which is the operating system I use on my Raspberry Pi. I've got lots of videos on how to install it and set it up. I just installed from the UWOW store the Ubuntu server version. And, uh, and then applied the KDE Plasma desktop environment and it works really well. Uh, it's lovely and fast. It is uh, a really nice desktop environment. So thanks very much for watching. I hope this helps. Please like and subscribe.